What it do, guys? It's your girl, Calm Alexi, and I am here with We Serve Dope. What is We Serve Dope? We Serve Difference of Opinion presented to educate in an entertaining way. Okay, let's get it. Let's go. Guys, 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 I just want to get straight into it. All right, today we are talking about the Hawaii wildfires, guys. The wildfires, guys. It is taking homes. It is taking businesses it is taking people out about 36 people have already passed away guys this is actively happening in hawaii since tuesday night guys okay i'm gonna insert some clips here and of course in between i'll be giving my commentary if you're not into that that is okay i'm not gonna be for everybody but that's how i do it here on my channel okay hopefully i'll see you guys again hopefully you'll stick around but if you don't and this is it that is okay no hard feelings no um animosity all right y'all so i will catch y'all at another time but for those of you who stick around guys let's get into Raging wildfires sweeping across Maui have now killed at least 36 people. Hundreds of structures have been damaged. Thousands remain without power this morning. KTLA's Annie Rose Ramos is live in the newsroom with the latest for us. Good morning, Annie Rose. Eric, that death toll more than tripling overnight. 36 people have been killed, according to Maui officials. And at this hour, those fires continue to burn. Over 11,000 people were flown out of Maui yesterday alone, with the first flights now arriving here at LAX. Passengers shaken by what happened back in Hawaii. No food, no water, no supplies. Even at the hotels, um, some people that didn't get a chance to eat, actually. And then we had to fight for food and back then but but they were able to accommodate us just for like small amounts um, and the next day they opened the back the back road which very dangerous because you drive like really close on the cliff it took us four hours just to get uh, to the airport guys four hours four hours to get to the airport not knowing what's going on not knowing you, you just see a town falling apart burning people yelling screaming houses burning down uh, like could you imagine four hours of torture to an airport like guys let's put ourselves in their shoes okay let's do that today these fast-moving wildfires on two Hawaiian islands started earlier this week, fueled by winds from a passing hurricane, but has caused the most damage to a popular vacation town in Maui called Lahaina. Oh my gosh, look at the harbor. Unbelievable. This looks like Baghdad or something. Not for nothing, he was right. It did look like a war zone. The fire department in Maui is saying the area of the harbor you're seeing from up above sustaining widespread damage. And here are some of the images from the historic town of Lahaina taken yesterday. Residents reporting heartbreaking destruction and officials calling the town, quote, decimated, with at least 271 structures impacted and entire neighborhoods now wiped off the map. Some predicting the road to recovery to take years. This blaze being pushed by as fast as 80 per mile hour winds. So fast, many residents couldn't get out in time, some having to jump into the ocean to escape the flames, including these two residents who were eventually rescued from the water by the Coast Guard. The wind started burning us from, you know, everywhere, and then we had fire falling on us, our clothes were catching on fire. Yeah. It was burning our faces. We had to, like, just put water, go into the water. Yeah. It was just so insane. And the yeah. boats surrounded us, it was, they were exploding. I was just, how is this real? You guys hear that? Put yourself in that shoe. You, you are in water trying to avoid flame, trying to avoid the heat of flames. You keep going in water. And if you can't swim, could you imagine not being able to swim and that's the only way to, to save yourself? Could you imagine that? You scared to jump in the water because the fire is coming, but you can't swim. Oh. God bless everybody who's going through this right now. God bless them. Listen, send prayers out to Hawaii. Send prayers out. As of this morning, thousands have been evacuated, both tourists and residents of the island. But shelter space is running out, with the governor saying they don't have enough space for everyone. Many scrambling to get on flights at the airport, with the National Guard now assisting in those evacuations. But authorities adding some of those evacuation response efforts are being hampered by widespread cell service outages, preventing people from calling 911. Throughout this summer, Hawaii has been experiencing a drought. It's been hot. It's been 
dry. It's been a tinderbox, so when this hurricane hundreds of miles away caused winds, high winds to hit Hawaii, it didn't take long for those fires to ignite with officials saying they didn't see it coming. We never anticipated uh, in this state that a hurricane which did not make impact on our islands will cause this type of wildfires. Wildfires that wiped out communities, wildfires that wiped out businesses, wildfires that destroyed homes. Eric and Jessica, airlines like Southwest and Delta now trying to add as many flights as possible to help get people out of the area. But any outgoing flights from Los Angeles to Maui, those have been canceled. With officials there saying if you have plans to come to that island, cancel them and avoid this area altogether. As this all happened because of a hurricane that hit another town, it didn't even hit their town. This was like the backlash of a hurricane from another town. Okay, they caught like the backlash of it, which happened to be fire for some reason. You know, weird how the climate is changing and things is changing, guys, out here. Pay attention, pay attention. He's made his way to the island of Maui, where officials say a wildfire has destroyed more than 270 structures and killed at least three dozen people. Jonathan, good morning. And good morning to you, Tony. The historic town of Lahaina was hardest hit, and this morning the only road to it is closed down only for evacuations. We were able to gain access to the town late last night, and what we saw was pure devastation. One survivor describing the flames as burning so hot they appeared white, and they destroyed everything in their path from homes to hotels. As you mentioned, the death toll right now, 36, but there is concern this morning that number will only rise. Oh, what the f dude? Terrifying images out of a Maui neighborhood. Home after home swallowed by fast moving flames Tuesday night as residents scramble to escape. Somebody's down right now. Oh. Somebody's down right now. Yeah, somebody's down. On Maui's western shore, this was Lahaina's historic Front Street Business District before the wildfires. Oh my gosh, look at the harbor. And this was the devastation left behind Wednesday morning. Alan Dakar went to check on his gallery and was stunned to find the business district up in flames. And then realized he needed to leave because that fire was raging out of control. Grabbed some people who didn't have a way out. Told them to get their stuff, get in my truck, and we headed out. We're on a boat headed to Lahaina. This is one of the few ways to access the town. And what's incredible from this vantage point is the scale of destruction. We're talking miles of coastline completely burned. What we found there was utter devastation. Homes reduced to cinders, a way of life forever altered. A distant hurricane brought wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour fueling several large wildfires so quickly, the Coast Guard says it rescued 14 people, including two young children who were forced to jump in the ocean to escape the flames. We've been pulling people out since last night, trying to save people's lives. And there goes the house I lived in. As wind and fires downed power lines, this charred shopping center was turned into a ghost town. The wind was so intense. 76 year old William Bugle says he was burned on his arm when the roof blew off his house and he was hit by red hot shingles. You saw this fire grow oh, out of yeah. control because of the wind. It went from like nothing to like I felt this heat, this tremendous heat. Despite promised help from both federal and state agencies, Maui's relative isolation could slow the island's recovery. When a place on the mainland burns or is destroyed in a flood, it's awful but you can get resources there. You can't do that here. And state officials are asking anyone with non-urgent travel not to come to the island, and for good reason. There are currently thousands of tourists struggling to get off the island, and then there are those, the residents that live here, thousands of them evacuated, and many of them have no idea what home, if any, they'll return to when this road reopens, Nate. Am I the only one who feels like that was like a scene from a movie? That whole thing looked like a scene from a movie, guys. Oh my God, guys, we gotta pray for Hawaii. We gotta pray for Hawaii. Collective effort is now underway to get people out of Lahaina and West Maui. But once they get to Kahului, where do they go? KITV4's Jeremy Lee is at Kahului Airport with more on that story. 
here at Kahului Airport, you see the collective effort to get people off of the island of Maui. TSA lines backing up. Inner island flights at $19 to get people to anywhere but here. Also, five buses just arriving from the Sheraton Lahaina. I have an opportunity right now to speak to Matt Miller. He's from Southern California, and he just he joins us having just come off the bus. Matt, tell us a little bit about what you saw. Uh, last night we saw the fires burning in Lahaina, and apparently most of the town had burned. Uh, Sheraton was evacuating today. We were on the second bus out of the first set of five buses uh, that got to the airport today. And you could see devastation still continuing from the bus? Yeah, we could see apartment buildings that were still burning. Uh, they had recently cleared the road fire on the southern route out of Lahaina, but most of the town had burned. Uh, it was horrible. A lot of families lost homes. And you told me that the hotels were starting to ration food just before they knew how, the, how to get everybody out. Yeah, the power went out yesterday at 5 a.m. on all the hotels. Most of the hotels ran out of food. Sheraton started rationing food. They were going to plan on rationing water later, but they were trying to get everybody evacuated. Yeah, so we're on our way uh, over to Oahu now. Great. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Some of the harrowing stories we've seen here in Kahului include those who have lost their homes, people we know, colleagues who have relatives who have lost their homes, some who have lost their businesses. One of those is Ruby Mazur, who moved his gallery from Waikiki to Lahaina Front Street this month and was preparing to open on Thursday. That gallery is no more. He's been staying with his sons in a U-Haul as there have been no hotel rooms available here on Maui. We, we left Waikiki because we found this amazing location on Front Street, right in the heart of Front Street. They came in the day before the fire, wanting to buy art, and they said, well, come back tomorrow because we'll be officially open. Tomorrow never came. I mean, the banyan tree, all these beautiful galleries, it's over, it's gone, it's completely gone, it's a war zone. We'll continue to keep you updated on this story as activity continues into the morning here at Kahului Airport. Reporting from Maui, Jeremy Lee, KITV4 Island News. I am sad for that artist. I am sad. I am sad for that. You know, when you you are artist, you sensitive about your shh, okay? And this man lost a lot of his stuff, plus his business. Could you imagine relocating from somewhere to another place where you never even been at and you go and... You start the business, and before you even get to open the doors, everything is swiped. This also, to me, rings as guys. Like, guys, guys, guys. Who got the real power out here? You know what I'm saying? We give the government all this power, but in reality, it's God, right? It's God. God could swipe us all whenever the hell he wants to. Like, what we not understanding or getting out here? We praising artists, we praising the governments, presidents, and all this shit. But we won't praise God. The one person who has control, who can wipe us all out. Like, we're good today, and tomorrow our whole house is on fire or under the river. <laughs> like, like, I really need us to think about that. I, 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 humanity, man. And back to the fires, Lahaina is totally gone. That's what a longtime resident tells us after she fled her home and lost everything in the fire. KITV4's Diana Ko has her story, and this is new at nine. I own nothing. I have the clothes on my back and my car, and that is it. Fina Davis gathered her family of eight and fled to a family home in Kahana on Tuesday. Um, we decided to go ahead and evacuate out of Lahaina. My niece, whose father is one of the firefighters and through family, let us know that we need to leave Lahaina because they were running out of water. They self-evacuated. We didn't get the uh, evacuation alarms until 8 p.m. The fire started around 3.30. It reached my house on the ocean side of Lahaina, Front Street, by 5 p.m. It was when there was so much smoke we had to evacuate. Davis lived in Lahaina for 20 years, and this is the worst disaster she's seen there or anywhere. In my life, anywhere. There's nothing like it. There, There isn't a Lahaina left. There's no Lahaina Harbor. There's no Mala Wharf. Every restaurant, 
is burned. All the neighborhood, like the Jodo Mission, all those homes on Front Street are completely burned to the ground. With phone and internet lines down, she's had to work to assure her loved ones on the mainland she's okay. How are people finding out about their loved ones? They're not. And so we drove up this morning all the way up to the coffee farms above Kapalua to the very, very top of the coffee farms, and we were able to get phone service. She is in shock and describes a range of emotions in the people around her. Some people are emotional, but others are just don't even, they're confused. Um, a lot of people don't know what to do. They needed, they needed more direction, people to help them navigate the situation. Now, she's worried about her friends on the northern end of Lahaina. There are still people there. I mean, I'm lucky that I had gas. A lot of my friends can't can't leave because they don't have gas. That is so sad. Please don't let this be your reason, guys. As we know, we got to keep our cars gassed up. Try to leave your paperwork together, your birth certificates, your uh, social securities, all that stuff. Try to keep it in one folder in a bag ready to go. If anything happens, a house catches on fire, a flood or something like that, you can just carry that bag and go. That's the one thing you can run to with all your documents. Try to keep that all together. And always, if you have a vehicle, keep it with gas keep it gassed up because you never know what could happen from one day to the other you see her she got away she had gas but her friends did not and that is sad be you know that's sad not being able to save yourself or your family because of gas like guys try to keep your cars gassed up you know try to keep a little coin saved up you know and i'm 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 taking this advice as well we all need to learn we all need to help let's spread this guys spread the awareness they're in Kanapali, which is, you know, feels a little safer since they, the fire department is confident that they're going to be able to hold the fire back to that point. She says all she can do now is pray. Diana Ko, KITV4 Island News. So heartbreaking to see those images. At last check, Hawaii Pacific Health says there are three burn patients from Maui who were last reported to be in critical condition and the three people are now being treated at Straub Medical Center's burn unit in Honolulu. Guys, okay, I remember, I think I was about 16 years old, I'm not sure, when 9-11 hit, I was still in New York, right? Born and raised in Brooklyn, right? I was in Brooklyn. I remember going to Prospect Heights High School. I remember them trying to keep us in the building. Um, but uh, a lot of us did get away, and we ended up going to a friend's house who was a building. She lived in a really tall building, so you could see from her roof. Uh, the Twin Towers, okay, burning. You also see the second plane hit, right? Um, I remember everybody freaking out, going crazy. Um, listen, people was falling, jumping out of these windows. Just similar as the people who jumping into these waters. It was people jumping out of the windows, trying to survive, avoiding to fall from this tower. People had to walk over the bridges. You couldn't drive or any of that. People had to literally walk for hours to get to their homes from Manhattan to Brooklyn or wherever they were, wherever they were from. I will never forget the experience of how New York was upside down, the way everybody was going crazy, concerned, it was crying. People was getting calls that their family members were in these buildings, in the Twin Towers. And I'll never forget, I was in uh, summer school with a friend and we used to visit these towers, okay, often. We had just went back to regular school, right? We had just, because this was September. We had just went back to regular school, so we stopped going to the towers. We used to go for summer school. So we would have been in those towers had it been a summer school day, okay? Me, we were thinking about that. We would have been in those towers. And I also had a cousin who worked in the tower who ha actually was off that day. She could have been in that tower. So it's insane. Like, you know, you, you listen... I'm not saying that these hap these things happen to people who don't believe in God or whatever the case might be, but this you need to hang on to God more now than ever, people. I don't know what y'all out here doing, but we need to pick a side, okay? Pick your side. I know what my side is, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Team God all day, you feel me? I need y'all to figure that out. I need y'all to pray more now than ever. You need a prayer closet. You need prayer warriors, okay? Listen, do you see what's happening? Nobody's exempt, okay? Nobody's exempt, exempt but you better pick your side, okay? Because when God comes, when when when... when you better know where you're going. All right now, I'm just saying. <laughs> I had to share that with y'all. Guys, what we could take from this though, guys, is please, 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 please make sure you call on your loved ones. Make sure everything's okay. Make sure everyone's all right. Tell them that you love them. That's mainly important. Make sure you tell them that you love them. 
and you never know what could happen from one day to the next you have to be aware to find out what's going on in your towns always keep um knowledge on what's going on in your towns and your neighborhoods and your family's towns and neighborhoods if you could be ahead of this stuff you know be ahead of it right make sure you got generators and things of that nature from from lights going out make sure you got food from food shortages whatever this is all right because we don't know right only god knows what's going to happen my thing is please be more in tune now more than ever okay make sure you praying make sure you with family you loving on family you calling family you know what's going on okay guys it's very much important at this time as you know there's a spiritual war as you know god is coming okay for those of you who know no okay so please guys okay make sure your cars is gassed up make sure that um, you got all your documents together. All that I said in this video, guys, make sure whatever you can get from the video, please get from the video. Let me know what your, um, comments are, opinions are down below. I would love, love, love to read them and know. Okay, guys, let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Spread this awareness, guys. Share this video, whoever you think may need to hear it, guys. I appreciate you guys so much for being here and watching, guys. I appreciate you listening to my opinion. And so I gave you my opinion and you have been served and i will catch you guys in the next one y'all be safe